There's one beautiful baobab tree off to my right, set amongst the slightly golden remnants of the Mapani scrub of late winter. It looks rather beautiful, even though the light is pretty dull. It's quiet. Uh, I'm driving down the S61 towards a waterhole, which might have some action. There's a lovely breeze. It's, it's almost cold enough to actually turn the heating on in the car. Or I guess I could put a jacket on. But, you know, on the cusp of this November wet season, we're in October now, I can, I can smell the, the hint of water in the atmosphere. And there's this intoxicating mix of smells of dry and wet that I wish, I wish I could just bottle. There's a number of waterholes dotted along the roads of the Kruger National Park and a lot of them were built in order to attract concentrations of game so that the viewing public could see them. I think a lot of people wonder why the trees aren't cleared out in front of them and it's made easier to see those animals. And I think the answer is a good one. You want to preserve as much of the natural environment as possible and I applaud the decision not to clear out the trees in front of the waterholes. And it's gone further, it's been recognized in the last several years that the overgrazing around the waterholes is really causing a problem. So many of them have actually been turned off. There's no longer water in them and the animals are forced to disperse out into the bush into a much more natural state of being and balance with their environment. The downside for me and you possibly, is that they're harder to see. I've just spotted a pair of African hawk eagles, the second time I've ever seen these species, or this species. And it's not a good photograph, it's not a good video, but I just want to get a shot of them because it's quite rare to see them, at least for me. And the reason I say pair as well is because they're most often seen as pairs in this bush. And it's really great to see them here, really great. They're flying around from treetop to treetop in this breeze that we've got, and then hunting. Like so many of the sightings of birds, you have to forego the shot and move on because they're too far away. And all you can do is get a record shot of these guys and make a note that you have actually seen them. And I fear a lot of the sights along this track today are going to be like that. It's not going to be a day for photography, but more for enjoying where I am and what I'm doing. Say to the world that
There's a few major rivers in the Kruger Park where the bridge uh, allows you enough distance to be safe from animals crossing uh, or animals in the environment and the Levuhu River, River Bridge at Prafuri is one of them and it's also a great place to see things like bones, spine tail, horse swift, uh, the slightly rarer birds of the north and uh, down there is an elephant grazing on the river bank as well. So my big plan was to turn around once I got to the Levuhu Bridge and head to the Pafuri picnic site, which is three kilometers away. But when I turned Basil around and looked back across the bridge, there's an elephant in the way. And he's eating, having a nice old time, and making me watch. I'm starving. What a nerve. I can't go and challenge it. It's too big. So we have to wait. It's not just animals and birds that you can photograph down here. There's, there's beautiful foliage on the trees. The trees themselves are stunning. And there's flowers out because it's kind of spring at the moment. I think I've seen a sort of lovely purple lilac flower. It's a lot like lilac actually in its looks. And it, I think it could be you know, I'm no expert in vegetation and flora, but it looks like uh, possibly a Kalahari apple leaf tree. Uh, I'll have to go and try and figure that out, but this, the flowers are beautiful. There's nothing quite so beautiful as that thick green silence of woodland as the pregnant sky waits to spill its rain. And it's made a little bit more special by this arch of fever trees over the road ahead of me along the Levuha River. The wind's soughing in the branches and over there I think I can hear the odd call and cry of a wood hoopoe, or a group of wood hoopoes. Back over my left shoulder, there's an orange-breasted bushrike calling. And it's just beautiful to be here, listening to the wind through these trees.
Well, I finally made it to Crook's Corner. So called, I guess, because if you were a criminal, you could escape to one of three countries. Zimbabwe, in that direction, across the Limpopo River. Mozambique, in that direction. Or South Africa, to the south. So it was a hideout for a den of thieves back in the day. But now, it's a wonderful place to enjoy the bird life and wildlife along the banks of the great, green, greasy Limpopo River. I say that because I believe that's how Rudyard Kipling described it. Although whether he saw it or not, I'm not sure because it doesn't look greasy or green to me. Well, it's taken me nine hours to get here this morning. There's been so much to see and I've got just two hours and 45 minutes to make it back home. So it's going to be a little bit of a rush. You can see spots. Quite exciting. There's zebra up ahead. Too big for cheetah, but maybe there's a maybe there's a uh, oh there's impala there. This guy's hunting. Cheetah chased across the road. Didn't look too fast. The animals became aware of him. He was using the cover along the road. There's got to be a special place in hell for GoPro batteries. They always seem to go flat just as something really cool is happening. In this case, it was a hunting cheetah. And I was trying to take you through the hunt and the stupid GoPro battery obviously went flat. Or maybe the owner of the GoPro battery was a bit dumb too because I probably should have replaced it a long time ago. But it was a pretty cool little experience. I got some shots with the R5 and the 400 f2.8 on this dull day. There's another cheetah. I'm turning around and what is it doing? Did it catch something? He's here on the side of the road. He's marking territory. Same cheetah. What a afternoon. Got to try and get in position here. Get a camera on this guy. He's being a bit weird. He's licking, licking something off the, uh, the cream tart waterhole sign. Completely oblivious to me. Maybe it's a salt, a salt thing that he's after. Very strange behaviour. I have to say. Quite cool to have a cheetah all to myself. If I'm lucky, he might get up on the sign. I think it's a territory thing. Well, there's not many things worse than having to abandon a cheetah sighting, but 
I've got so far to go to get home. I really wanted to catch him jumping up onto the road sign because I think that's what he's going to do. He's looking at me at the moment because there's scat on top of it. So it's obviously a territory thing. But I really don't have any more time to spend with this guy. I've been on my own for probably 20, 15 minutes now. And he's confident as anything. He's licking the base of this thing. And completely oblivious to me. Let's see if I can get some footage of him as I go past. There he goes. He's on the sign. I was taking a video with the stupid DGI pocket. Time to go, Mr. Cheetah. <laughs>